Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Weapons left by US military in Afghanistan reaching Kashmir. FATF to assess Pakistan's action against UN designated terror groups. And struggle against Taliban continues in Afghanistan. The spillover of high-tech modern weapons and advanced night vision devices left over by Americans in Afghanistan after the fall of Kabul in August 2021 is now finding its way towards Indian Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir via Pakistan through the line of control. A senior army official in Kashmir has confirmed that the weapons from Afghanistan were recovered from the terrorists that were recently killed in Indian Army operations. A report. Most terror groups thrive on propaganda, inflammatory speeches, and training videos. One such video was released by PAFF, the People's Anti-Fascist Front, a new terror outfit in Kashmir. Reports say it is a shadow group of Jaish e Muhammad. Ignore the rest of it and just focus on the weapons that these terrorists are carrying. They look too advanced as they are American rifles. The M249 light machine guns, M4 carbine rifles, FN509 tactical guns, and M1991 pistols. So how did these terrorists get them from Afghanistan? The large cache of arms and ammunition that the USA had left behind in Afghanistan have now found their way to Kashmir in India. As the Pakistan-backed terrorists operating in the valley are seen using such weapons, a senior army official has confirmed that Afghan terrorists are now infiltrating into India and American weapons from Afghanistan were recovered from the terrorists that were recently killed in Indian Army operations. पिछले एक साल में सीज़ फार अंडरस्टैंडिंग होने के बावजूद तकरीबन छह से आठ प्रयास किए गए हैं जो लाइन ऑफ कंट्रोल पर विफल कर दिए गए हैं लेकिन उसके बावजूद ये टेररिस्ट सामने मौजूद हैं उग्रवादी मौजूद हैं और जब ये न्यूट्रलाइज करे गए थे लाइन ऑफ कंट्रोल में एक्शन के दौरान तो उनके पास से जो हथियार जो सर्वेलेंस डिवाइस और जो असला बारूद मिला है वो आम तौर पे देखा नहीं गया है और ये असला बारूद और इक्विपमेंट जो है वो अफगानिस्तान में मौजूद था जब अमेरिकन फोर्सेस वहां से गई हैं तो हमारा ये विश्लेषण है और ये मानना है कि ना केवल आतंकवादी बल्कि हथियार और सामान भी यहां पर जो आने वाले समय में कश्मीर में आ सकता है अकॉर्डिंग टू रिपोर्ट देर वर मोर देन सिक्स लाइक स्मॉल आर्म्स लेफ्ट बिहाइंड इन अफगानिस्तान दीज इंक्लूड राइफल्स मशीन गन्स पिस्टल ग्रेनेड लॉन्चर्स and rocket propelled grenades apart from this surveillance equipment radio systems drones night vision goggles are also included in all this it is believed that the leftover arms and ammunition are being sold openly by the taliban in afghanistan the terror groups from pakistan are buying these weapons and ammunition from the taliban and sending them across the border to kashmir valley the defense analyst in India had always predicted that the arms and ammunition will fall into the hands of terror groups operating from Pakistan. Even in the 2008 election campaign, while talking about the Afghan war, Joe Biden had raised concern that the left-behind weapons in Afghanistan could be used to kill civilians in America. No one knows when these weapons will reach America, but it has been clearly established that these weapons have reached Kashmir. How we end this war, and it makes a big difference to tell the American people the truth about what our options are in ending this war. If tomorrow the order goes out from the president, I'm president of the United States, I issue an order, end the war today, begin to withdraw all American troops. It will take a year to get the American troops out. Do you hear me now? That's the truth. It will take a year to get them physically out. Now, if you leave all the equipment behind, you might be able to do it in seven months. And you leave those billions of dollars of weapons behind, I promise they're going to be used against your grandchild and mine someday. One 
while the Taliban leadership, which has been ruling Kabul since 15 August, has kept a part of the weapons with them. They have handed over many of these weapons to the Pakistan army. Sources said that the transfer of weapons to the Pakistan military was amongst the most prominent topics that were discussed when Pakistan's intelligence agency, ISI's chief, Faiz Hamid, flew to Kabul in the first week of September last year. Some of these weapons are now being carried by Pakistan Army personnel who are posted in the restive Baloch region where a separation movement is going on for decades. And many of these guns and rifles are being used by the jihadi groups in Kashmir. The developments after Kabul's takeover have changed the terror equation in Kashmir. However, Indian security forces are capable and well-equipped to deal with the terrorists even if they possess such advanced weapons. Pakistan's role as an epicenter of terrorism has been well documented by numerous international organizations, including the United Nations. Time and again, Islamabad has been warned by these organizations on terror charges and on many occasions, Islamabad has been exposed globally on terror financing. Ahead of FATF plenary meeting in Paris, several exiled dissidents staged a massive protest outside the headquarters of Financial Action Task Force to persuade the anti-terror financing organization to place Pakistan on the blacklist. A report. Echoes of terrorist, terrorist, Pakistan, Pakistan resounded outside the headquarters of the Financial Action Task Force in France. Exiled Baloch, Pashtuns, Uyghur and Hong Kong communities living in Paris staged a massive protest and urged the watchdog to blacklist Islamabad. Over the past 13 years, Pakistan has been placed on the grey list thrice. According to a recent report of the International Forum for Rights and Security, Pakistan is eye-washing Financial Action Task Force by making fulfilling compliance at a time when Pakistan continues to remain an epicenter of terrorism and other criminal activities. Pakistan has been on the FATF grey list since June 2018 and it continues to be on the list after the FATF found many strategic anti-money laundering and combating the financing of terrorism deficiency in the country's system. Experts believe that Pakistan is likely to slip into the blacklist of the terrorist and anti-money laundering watchdog for non-compliance. FATF का इलास होने वाला है और उसमें अगेन यही होगा ड्रामा के पाकिस्तान को हम एक और मौका देते हैं और ये और वो मेरी भविष्यवाणी है पेशिंग वही है कि पाकिस्तान ग्रे लिस्ट में ही रहेगा ना पाकिस्तान ब्लैक लिस्ट में जाएगा ना पाकिस्तान लिस्ट से निकलेगा ये एक पॉलिटिकल एजेंडा है वरना किसको नहीं पता कि पाकिस्तान टेररिज्म में किस हद तक इन्वॉल्व है पाकिस्तान घुटने घुटने तक टेररिज्म में फुली इन्वॉल्व है और उसके आप यूं समझ लें कि पाकिस्तान में जितने टेररिस्ट ग्रुप हैं फ्रेंचाइजीज हैं आईएसआई की हाफिज सईद ले लें जैश मोहम्मद के मसूद अजहर हैं दूसरे हैं सारे वो अफगानिस्तान और पाकिस्तान में भरपूर टेररिज्म करते हैं किसको नहीं पता लेकिन नहीं पता अगर तो एफएटीएफ को नहीं पता For years, Pakistan has been deceiving the Financial Action Task Force by pretending to take action against internationally designated terrorist groups and their financial networks, but only on paper. Pakistan has adopted a three-pronged approach to get out of the FATF watch list. The first prong is to make a show of acting against the UN-proscribed individuals and organizations to fulfill its high-level political commitment. The first prong is to make a show of acting against the UN proscribed individuals and organizations to fulfill its high level political commitment. The second prong is Pakistan playing the victim card by trying to blame its predicament on India. The third prong of the Pakistani strategy has been to launch a propaganda offensive that is aimed to pressure, even shame, the FATF to cut some slack for Pakistan. 
Before the FAT of meeting in February 2020, the Pakistanis realized that their old book wasn't working and needed to be tweaked. They had to do something more to deceive the world. In July 2019, the top leadership of Jamaat Uddawa and its wing Falai Insanit Foundation, including the chief Hafiz Saeed, his deputy Abdul Rahman Maki, Zafar Iqbal, Amir Hazma, were booked on terror finance charges in around two dozen cases. But in practice, these terror groups continue to function openly and are collecting funds publicly. Moreover, various agencies in Pakistan are involved in terror training, terror financing, not only in Pakistan, but in the region and around the world. Therefore, many experts do believe that the norms by which the Financial Action Task Force functions also need modifications. In their opinion, Pakistan should be blacklisted. So we're gathered here outside the FATF office today with, uh, you know, Baloch protesters, with Pashtuns, with uh, people from Hong Kong, from the Chinese community, from the French community. Uh, and the idea is to remind the FATF that it needs to uh, deliver on its commitments, especially when it comes to blacklisting Pakistan, because in Pakistan, uh, terror financing continues. We know that uh, the terror networks in Balochistan continue to operate. Uh, the money laundering op uh, operations continue. We know that Pakistan is using its, its uh, you know, different routes uh, by sending money to Africa and through that uh, it's using its, these uh, routes to, uh, to uh, fund terror activities back in South Asia, back in Afghanistan and Kashmir. With Pakistan's continuation in the grey list, it is increasingly becoming difficult for Islamabad to get financial aid from the International Monetary Fund, World Bank, Asian Development Bank and the European Union, thus further enhancing problems for the debt-ridden nation which is in a precarious financial situation. And now Pakistan desperately wants to move out from the FATF grey list as it would relax the financial growth trade and investment channels for the country. Islamabad is putting up various actions to showcase the proactive attitude of the Imran Khan-led government in rescuing Pakistan from falling into the blacklist. Pakistan needs to introspect and take decisive actions. The sooner, the better. After Kabul fell to the Taliban on August 15, 2021, Panjshir province remained the lone defiant holdout with the resistance forces led by Ahmed Massoud fighting against the Taliban. The Panjshir province, where the National Resistance Force is based, has been turned into a significant battleground for the Taliban as they are yet to gain full control over the region. Meanwhile, multiple videos on social media are suggesting that Taliban is trying to establish itself as an international terrorist group while competing with other militant groups. A report. A footage was just released on social media, which shows the National Resistance Front forces in Panjshir province of Afghanistan clashing with the Taliban. In the video, NRA fighters are opening fire on a Taliban-operated helicopter. Panjshir province, where the National Resistance Front of Afghanistan is based, has turned into a significant battleground for the Taliban. The NRA forces have claimed that an increasing number of people are joining the organization to combat the Taliban's reign. Taliban have also scaled up its attack against the NRA forces and one of the video clips shows Taliban helicopters patrolling the hideouts of the National Resistance Front. The interesting thing is that NRA forces claim that these helicopters were being flown by Pakistani pilots with the Taliban themselves directing the pilots. Taliban knows that they have command over the highway that goes through Panjshir and nothing else. The uh, Panjshiris are waiting in the mountains. They are carrying out attacks from time to time, guerrilla attacks from time to time to harass the Taliban. So the Taliban is taking help from the Pakistanis, special uh, Pakistani special forces where the Pakistani is concerned, trying to do things. They have got drones. They have been trying to do things. But given the terrain, it's next to impossible because the population does not support the Taliban. So, once the uh, Taliban leaves, because they will not climb up the mountains to engage with the NRF, once they leave, and they will have to, because 
during the winter months it becomes difficult for you to stay there once they leave uh, the northern alliance or the nrf will come back and recapture whatever the taliban uh, possesses right now the resistance forces have continued to counter the taliban's august 15 takeover just weeks ago the fighters of nrf had issued a video message to the people of afghanistan urging them to not be silent the struggle against the regime is essential as the taliban is trying to establish itself as an international terrorist group while competing with other terrorist groups in a viral video taliban minister for promotion of virtue and the prevention of vice proudly says no group has carried out as many suicide attacks as the taliban in another video taliban's interior minister siraj haqqani can be seen claiming that only he had made 1050 suicide bombers for their goals the brutality against common people in the islamic emirate as as clear as a day to the whole world to see recently a woman named zainab abdullahi was killed as a checkpoint in kabul people protested carrying her body in front of the governor's office but unfortunately it seems that no one is listening to them in another incident a man accused of adultery was publicly whipped by the taliban in afghanistan's southern uruzgan province people in afghanistan have suffered enough they need protection and peace now to shore up shore up the faithful to basically build up support what do you do you advertise your uh, terrorist activities the fact that you are engaging in terrorism specifically the kind of acts are uh, described vividly so a lot of people basically the ones who are attracted towards this kind of uh, activities come to you at the same time somebody parallelly will say we do no such thing this is for the international community to tell them look we are not engaged in uh, terrorist activities so they are mobilizing terrorists while at the same time ensuring that there is a look for there is a legal basis for them to say that we are not terrorist uh, organizations at all and therefore we should be recognized this has been going on for quite some time now i think over two decades unfortunately we find that the international community still falls for it and that is why pakistan and its proxies in this case the islamic emirate of afghanistan is practicing common afghans are paying heavily for both afghanistan's conflict and its abrupt end in taliban victory to abandon the afghan people now would be a historic mistake urgent steps must be taken to address the looming humanitarian crisis in afghanistan and stave of economic collapse even if the assets are unfrozen humanitarian aid doubles and triples it will not be enough to mitigate let alone avert the crisis that afghanistan is seeing no matter how much afghanistan is provided still there is a crisis that is sliding to become a catastrophe pro khalistani separatists have been relentlessly indulging in anti india activities they are misusing all its state's mercenaries to push in terrorists and provoke anti india sentiments to disrupt peace and harmony in india exposing these nefarious agendas of khalistan law enforcement officials of india busted a target killing module backed by international sikh federation and handlers based abroad with the arrest of its four operatives have a look the support for khalistan in india has sunk very low but the militant groups like the khalistan liberation force and six for justice have been pushing their agenda hard through various platforms this has been exposed with the latest arrest of four men with alleged links to pro khalistani outfits according to police the accused were allegedly involved in targeted killings in punjab at the behest of their handlers abroad and had allegedly received funding from pro khalistani groups to create an atmosphere of fear in punjab the police has identified the accused as sagar alias binni sunil alias pehlwan jatin alias rajesh and surendra an ak47 assault rifle and 49 rounds along with three foreign made pistols have been recovered from their possession 
Investigations later revealed that the four accused were in touch with International Sikh Federation, which is based in Pakistan. Gujjan Singh, alias Janta, from Australia, Hardeep Singh Nijjar and Arshadeep Singh Dalla from Canada. In the recent farmers' protest, we have seen that there were uh, Khalistan flags and slogans of Khalistan and banners of Khalistan that were coming up. Now, uh, though the mainland uh, of Punjab, uh, there have been, we have not seen of late many uh, uh, many people coming out for openly for Khalistan. But then the very fact that Pakistan is sending uh, arms and ammunition through drones. Uh, into Punjab, they are crossing the IB and coming to Punjab uh, and they are being dropped and we have also seen that uh, um, there have been arrests made in Sonipat, there was an arrest made uh, where three men were uh, arrested for links with the Khalistan outfit. The foreign countries are fueling this Khalistan movement, they don't want this Khalistan movement to die down and they want this to keep flaring up and they want uh, a free Khalistan from India. Pro Khalistan separatists settled abroad are making repeated attempts to grab the attention of the world Sikh community by indulging into violence. Just few months back, Park Bad Khalistan ideologue Gurpant Ban Singh Panno of Band Outfit Six for Justice released a video in which he threatened Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and tried to instigate common youth. The likelihood of Khalistan groups receiving funding, support and military training from Pakistan is also significant. As Pakistan for decades has been sponsoring and aiding Khalistani terror organizations on its soil to carry out terror-related activities in India. Indian diaspora has been continuously facing threats from such brainwashed Khalistani sympathizers who are being funded by ISI. The first thing that the security forces uh, should do is um, increase a lot of intelligence. Uh, the intelligence sources uh, uh, should give apt information and they are giving apt information. Uh, immediately taking action against them and uh, giving a big blow to Pakistan because Pakistan uh, is backing these Khalistani uh, terrorists and they are fueling this entire movement and plus also give a very, very loud and a firm uh, uh, voice to the world to stop fueling any kind of terror activities in the country, may it be Khalistan or may it be uh, any, ter any terror activity in Kashmir. New generation in Punjab has totally rejected pro Khalistani separatist malicious propaganda and has opposed any such move that divides people along with lines of faith. Hence, those supporting Khalistan movement should now understand that it cannot achieve its goal of forming a new separatist Khalistan either through conventional war or through other conspiracies. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.